Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. First we are going to start with Kherson area and with the Parozhye area. The Russians continue bombing and shelling the islands between Kherson and Alyeshki and in this video we see how the Russian Su-34 bombed this settlement, this island between two banks of the river with the guided bombs and X-34 missiles. Uh, the Russian reported, the author of that video reported that as a result of that strike 15 Ukrainian soldiers were wounded and one ammo depot was destroyed and you know that this is very important to destroy the ammo depots between the islands because uh, there is no uh, norm normal connection between the mainland and the islands and it is very difficult to get there some munition and so on. So every single every destroyed ammo depot is a very big uh, benefit, a very big advantage, advantage of the site. Now we are moving to the north, we are going to the settlement by the name of Kazatska. The Russians continue bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions on that bank of the river. And you know that when talking about the report of Ministry of Defense, almost every single day the Russians provide us a very big number of losses of the Ukrainian side. The Ukrainians have accumulated significant number of the force along the, their bank of the river. Maybe they try to make a view that they are planning to cross the river, but uh, because of this tactic, this doctrine, the Ukrainians are, uh, are suffering uh, significant losses while being bombed by the Russians. Now we are moving to uh, to Zaporozhye area and uh, today we got, uh, yeah, maybe this is not uh, the very fresh video, maybe this is an old video. The author of that video claims that uh, the Russian drones, uh, Russian FEP drones were attacking the Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian armored vehicles during their withdrawal, withdrawing process from Petihatki. So for now it's very difficult to understand whether uh, this attack took place today, the previous night, or this is just an old video. Uh, that uh, show us another uh, this the same situation from another angle. Now we are moving to uh, Bradley Square, and today uh, we got a lot of very interesting update. This night, the Ukrainians launched another offensive operation, a very powerful offensive operation. We start receiving updates somewhere at 5 a.m. The Russians reported that the Ukrainians launched offensive operation at 5 a.m. and uh, there was the Ukrainians were using tanks and Bradleys. Up to 15 armored vehicles were heading in direction of Rabotina. Later at 6 a.m. we start receiving first photo confirmations. Uh, for example, in this video we see that, uh, that at least two armored vehicles was already burned by 6 a.m. and the Russians reported that by 6 a.m. they managed to destroy at least you know, four tanks and uh, they managed to destroy uh, one platoon of infantry. Somewhere at 7 a.m. we got another update that uh, that the total quantity of vehicles that Ukrainians were using during that attack was around 20 pieces, and uh, five of those um, vehicles have was already destroyed by the Russians. And somewhere at 8 a.m. We got more photo and video confirmations of complete defeat of the Ukrainians. They lost a lot of armored vehicles, a lot of tanks, but the Russians are saying that the Ukrainians uh, didn't stop. They continue attacking and continue bringing more and more reserves. So as I understand today, there are going to be very fierce clashes during the day. The Ukrainians are going to use more, uh, to involve more forces in the battle for Rabotina. And probably there is a very high chances that maybe today the Ukrainians will be able to enter Rabotina itself, or at least to buy past the settlement from the east and to get to the south in direction of Novopakrovka. So we'll see. Anyway, today is going to be a very important day. Furthermore, the Ukrainians continue bombing and shelling the Russian positions, the Russian artillery systems that the Russians were, are using and or were using to, su to support their forces and to attack the offensive Ukrainian forces. In this video, we see how the Ukrainians destroyed another Hobbitsa gets in Bear. Now we are moving further uh, to... Uh, we are going to probably to Klishevka, yes, to Artemos and Klishevka. During the previous night we got more updates from this bridgehead. Of course, the most important updates are coming from settlement Klishevka itself. Uh, the, uh, some sources are saying that the Russians have already left this settlement. Some sources are saying that the Russians are still there. Uh, when talking about geolocations and geolocated video, we got just one from the northern northwestern part of Klishevka. This is the Russian soldiers who were moving across this settlement, this village, somewhere in the vicinity of the railroad station and basically this is the only confirmation telling us that the Russians are still there. 
we got another video from the southwest southwestern part of the settlement on this video we see how the russians were trying to they were making some kind of reconnaissance with the drones above the settlement trying to find and trying to uh trying to find the ukraine position so as you can see according to this video uh, the russians uh were making this reconnaissance operation operation all over the entire cliche not not just over the western part or southern part the russian satellites the russian drone that that were flying above this territory was trying to investigate and was trying to find the Ukraine positions not just in the south but all over the cliche because so basically this is uh, this is some kind of another ge um, uh, video confirmation that probably the Russians were forced to step back from the settlement and currently the settlement is in the gray zone some Ukrainian sources reported that Andreevka fell under pressure of Ukrainian forces but said later we got the video from the Ukrainian side from the same direction how the Ukrainian drone was attacking the russian tanks so basically this video confirms that andreevka still remains under the russian control and that the russians haven't left that settlement uh very fierce fighting continues on the northern part of uh of uh Artemos bridge hat the Russians published a very interesting video it's of the freshest the probably the more the, the freshest video of of a domino fortification on the western part of um of Artemox, as you can see almost buildings of course are damaged but yet buildings these buildings still a very nice uh, area very nice uh, stronghold that ukrainians will be forced to take to capture if they want to return control there are a lot of fortifications even if cliche of fall it doesn't mean that ukrainians will be able to uh ca anti and capture uh, Artemox because the western fortification domino and so on is very powerful strong are uh, very powerful strongholds and it's highly unlikely the Ukrainians are able to capture these strongholds with one or two attacks or even in a week or something like this. Furthermore, the Russians continue counter artillery duels in this area and the Russians published a lot of videos showing how they were bombing and shelling the Ukrainian positions on the northern flank. Uh, basically, according to information we got, the Ukrainians, the Russians managed to repel the Ukrainians' attacks on the northern flank and managed to suppress the, any activity from the Ukrainian side. On this video, for example, we see how the Russians managed to discover and destroy Ukrainian artillery system in the vicinity of Markovo that Ukrainians were using to, uh, to for supporting their offensive forces in the direction of Yahidne. And also we got another video how the Russians managed to destroy another Ukrainian M777 howitzer that the Ukrainians were using to support their offensive operation in the direction of Klishevka. So what we can say for now that on the morning of the local time of the 26th of July probably the Russians have left Klishevka, this area is in the gray zone and the Ukrainians haven't entered the settlement just the Russians moved towards more reliable positions along the railroadways and the Ukrainians yet haven't entered the settlement as well. Now we're moving to the north and uh, some videos, geolocated videos we got from uh, uh, Krimina Forest. The Russians reported that they launched significant offensive operation in this area and managed to capture more strongholds and more uh, Ukrainian fortifications. Yet we haven't received any video or photo confirmations of that. But if you remember, we haven't received the same video and photo confirmation from Karamzinovka bridgehead. But now we see that uh, the Russians managed to develop significant bridgehead, managed to penetrate trade the Ukrainian's defense belt and to advance further so basically the Russians took a decision to keep uh, silence in this area not to provide information because they don't want to geolocate themselves first of all of course they don't want to show the types of weapon they use and the force as well so even if the Russians are advancing there I believe that we are going to see the first video and photo confirmations of that maybe in a week or in two when the Russians will be able to bypass some region and some significant number significant significant um, square of the territory and probably that's it about this local situation and we got also a few videos from the border between Kharkiv and Belgorod and the Russian Federation on this video we see how the Russians managed to discover another Ukrainian position in this area and as a result of artillery strike the Russians managed to destroy another Ukrainian position of the forces or probably uh, the Ukrainian ammo depot it's I don't know I don't think the that this is very important uh, like uh, operations because as you can see most of the buildings in this area are completely 
uh, wasn't damaged uh, so it's not a problem for the Ukrainians to change their positions and of course very fierce clashes and bombings continues on the border between Sumer and Russia neither the Russians and nor the Ukrainians are crossing this border but there are very fierce artillery duels and something tells me that either the Russians and the Ukrainians use the Sumer and Kharkiv area as a training training cent centers for their artillery squads like uh, before sending the artillery forces to let's say uh, Bakhmut or Zaporozhye the Russians train their forces in Sum and Kharkiv during the counter artillery duels with the uh, enemy's forces and that's it for this short video on military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye